Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Felicia. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite, absolute favorite house plants that I currently own in my house collection. I would say that I have a pretty medium sized, decent amount of house plants. But before I jump into the video, I just wanted to say thank you all so much for the overwhelming support in my recent summer 2021 house plant tour video. Thank you guys so much for the comments, feedback, likes, some of the suggestions for some of the issues I've been dealing with with some of my plans. Thank you guys again. If you haven't seen that video after you watch this one, be sure to check that out. Let's jump into today's video. First up, I have my Chinese Evergreen. This is a Red Siam. I absolutely love the Chinese Evergreen plant. It is such a beautiful plant. This one in particular, what attracted me the most about this plant are the pink stems. And I really, really like the green and red leaves. And this plant, is I have no troubles whatsoever with this plant. This plant is constantly giving me new leaves and that's not an exaggeration. I purchased this plant as one plant. I believe I got it from Lowe's. It was one plant. It looked pretty full as it does now. Um, and I decided to separate it into two plants, which looked really nice, but I just missed the fullness of how the plant looked when it was together. So I did film a video if you're interested in watching and how I took this plant from two individual plants to one. And I have it here in this white ceramic pot. I absolutely love this pot. And one thing about me, if you've seen any of my past plant videos, I like using nursery pots because I just feel like it's easier when it's time to water your plant. You just simply take it out of the nursery pot, go water it and put it back. And also if you're like me and you enjoy collecting unique and funky looking plant pots, then if you have your plant in the nursery pot, all you have to do is take it out of the nursery pot, place it inside your new pot and you're good to go. So plant number one, my Chinese Evergreen Red Seam. All right, next I'm gonna move on to the Pothos family. A lot of people may think that the Pothos plant is one of the easiest, most basic plants there is. And that's true, it really is. It is a very simple, easy to take care of plant. I would caveat that by saying certain plants that may be easier for some are not easy for all. The Pothos plant has been doing extremely well in my care. I do have, let me see, one, two, three, three pothos plants that I'm gonna show you. So first pothos plant is my golden pothos. This is what it looks like. And this plant has grown so much since I've gotten it. Absolutely love this plant. This plant has grown so much for me. And again, it's a pothos plant. Pothos plants are known for growing. And what I love most about this plant is that it's a trailing plant. When I first got into indoor plants, I was absolutely looking for a plant that trails because I just feel like if you collect plants as a way of decorating your home, then you know, trailing plants, they just look so beautiful once they cascade down a shelf or you know maybe a floating shelf, a bookcase. I love this plant so much and this is probably the longest cascading plant that I do have and you know, I love it. I'm probably going to have to repot this plant though pretty soon because as you can see, the roots are starting to stick out from the nursery pot. So that's something that I'll definitely be doing pretty soon. If you guys are interested in seeing how I repot this or any of my plants, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to show you guys. So this is Golden Pothos number one. Here's Golden Pothos number two. This one started as a really, really small plant, obviously, because it's in a small pot. This is another one I'm gonna have to repot pretty soon because the roots are sticking out from the bottom. I bought this plant for $5.99 from my local grocery store. It was really, really tiny at the time. And now look, even this one is starting to trail, which is pretty neat. And then I have it in this um, plant pot that I got from Target. Love this plant pot. I have so many of them around my house. I remember when I first got into indoor plants in 2020 and I began looking for really nice, beautiful pots. This was one that I saw a lot in other people's videos, photos on Instagram, and I just could not find it anywhere. So when I found it this year, I racked up. I have a ton of them in my collection. I have six or seven of these right now in my collection, maybe even eight. So love them so much. And I just thought it would look really beautiful with my pothos plant. It almost looks like hair. So this is pothos plant number two, a second golden pothos. Final pothos plant is my neon pothos. And this is what she looks like. Again, I have it in a similar plant pot, a little slightly bigger one. 
The funny thing about this Neon Pathos, so I was on the hunt for a Neon Pathos plant and I could not find it anywhere. None of my local box stores carried the Neon Pathos. None of my local nurseries carried the Pathos. That was, of course, until I found my favorite nursery called Williams Nursery. It's located in Westfield, New Jersey, which is close to Springfield, if you're familiar with the area. I could not find a Neon Pathos anywhere. So my wonderful husband, he went online, he ordered one for me around the holidays. It actually came, um, I think, a week later. As you guys know, the holidays 2020, with everything going on in the world, uh, shipments were delayed. So if you ordered a houseplant out there and it took an extra long time to arrive, you kind of know how he felt at the time. So the plant did arrive, and it arrived kind of wonky. I'll insert a picture of what it looked like. There were a few leaves that were, you know, kind of wilted over. I had to cut it. The plant was in really bad condition to the point where we had to call the place that he purchased it from and let them know, unfortunately, the plant arrived late. No fault to them. It was very much the post office fault, but we just wanted to make them aware. And they were nice enough to refund him his money. But I didn't want to throw the plant away. I just really felt like, I feel like I can rehab this plant to life. And seven, eight months later, here we are. This plant is growing so much. It's so beautiful. Let me give you guys a close up of the leaves. You'll notice that some of the leaves are neon. Some of them look a little bit more green than others, but I mean, it's fine. It's growing so much. This is probably the second longest trailing plant that I have, which again is funny because this plant started off in really bad condition. So I'm so glad we didn't throw this plant away and I'm so happy to have it in my collection, my Neon Pathos. All right, so next up, I'm gonna move on to the Ficus family, Ficus Elastica, and I'm gonna start with my Ficus Taniki, and I have it in this plant pot. And if you're returning from my indoor plant video, you'll notice that I do have this in a different pot. I originally had this indoor on top of my bookshelf, but as I stated in that video, this plant, there was a lot of um, fungus gnats going on, this plant, I noticed it was crisping on the edges. And I also noticed that it didn't seem to be growing that much. So since that video, I decided to change out the soil because I really felt like there must have been some fungus net eggs in the soil. So I decided I'm not getting rid of this plant because I really, really love this plant. I've been looking, searching far and wide for this plant. So I went ahead, I gave it a combination of soil, orchid bark, and perlite, which is a pretty standard mixture that a lot of us plant folks use. And of course you wanna use that orchid bark and perlite just to help with aeration and to help with um, drainage. I really feel that that helped because I have not been seeing any fungus gnats flying around this plant. In addition to changing out the soil, I decided to place this plant outside because again, I noticed that the plant wasn't growing as much. And since I placed it outside, if you can see here at the top, I noticed that there's a new leaf budding. And this one has been budding in this plant for a while, but it was always really small. But since putting the plant outside in direct sun, I noticed that there has been some growth. So I'm really hoping this plant does well. The crispy edges, that was a situation even before I moved it outside in direct sun. So I'm really hoping I can save this plant because this is one, another one that I was on the hunt for, couldn't find it anywhere. When I did finally get it and put it in my collection, I was so excited. So I'm really doing everything I can to save this plant. All right, next up in the ficus family is my ficus elastica ruby. And this is what she looks like. This one is a little dry and the leaves are dusty. So I do have to water it pretty soon, but I love this plant. This is what it looks like. It's actually really, really small. And I don't mind purchasing plants small because I enjoy watching them grow. That's one of my things about house plants, right? Watching them grow. So this is another one that I've been on the hunt for. I couldn't find it anywhere until I went to um, Williams Nursery that I mentioned earlier. This is such a beautiful plant. The pattern on the leaves is just, it's so gorgeous. Beautiful plant, it's really small. I'm hoping for great results with this one. I'm considering putting this one outside next to the Taniki just to encourage more growth. Right now I do have it inside on my plant shelf under my grow lights, but we'll see how this one goes. Next up is one of the plants I always get questions about. This is my Hoya Carnosa Compacta or Hindu Rope. 
This is such a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. So beautiful, so unique. If you haven't seen my indoor plant video, I shared in that video that I was looking for this plant everywhere. I couldn't find it. I didn't think I was even going to find it in any of my local stores. So I decided to order a smaller version online on Amazon. I got that plant. The small one was about 20 bucks and I'll insert a photo of what that plant looks like. And I don't mind purchasing plants small because I enjoy watching them grow, but like a day or two later, I found my local nursery and I found this plant and I immediately picked it up. This is probably the most expensive plant in my collection. I paid $59 for it. I know, but it is a pretty nice sized plant as you can see. And this plant has also been giving me a lot of new growth. So if you can see here from the little, these little sticks here, the little stems, Here's some new growth right here. Here's some new growth right here. This plant is pretty slow to grow, but again, it has been pushing out a lot of new little leaves. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited to watch this plant trail. It is a bit pricey and I do have reservations about paying more than $20 for plants. I'm so glad that I decided to get this one. If I didn't get this plant, I probably would have gone home and would have regretted it. So I'm so glad that I got my hands on this hinder rope. All right, so one of the other plants that I wanted to share that I am actually not gonna hold because of the size of the plant is my Bird of Paradise. Oh boy, my Bird of Paradise plant. You're probably wondering, but we didn't see a Bird of Paradise in your plant tour video. And you didn't see it for a specific reason. My Bird of Paradise, my beautiful Bird of Paradise, I bought it pretty small. It's grown so much in the year that I've had it, but that plant has had issue after issue after issue with spider mites. I believe that plant probably had four cases of spider mites. I cleaned it with a combination of water, peroxide, neem oil. That did not help. The spider mites kept coming back and it was very frustrating because I love that plant so much. I'll insert a picture of what the plant looked like when I first purchased it. And then I'll insert a picture of what it looked like once it kind of grew to the point that it grew to before I got frustrated with the plant. Despite it having repeated cases of spider mites, I said, you know what, I really don't want to throw this plant away because I love this plant so much. I would say it was probably my absolute favorite plant of all my plants, of all the plants that I'm showing you today. So I decided, you know what, okay, I'm gonna put the plant outside on my balcony. I can't risk the spider mites jumping onto one of my other plants. So I decided I'm just gonna get rid of the plant and around that time is when I filmed my plant tour video. So that's why I didn't bother to show that one because I figured I'm gonna toss it. It's no longer gonna be in my collection by the time the video is live on my channel. What I decided to do was cut it back. I cut back all the limp leaves. I cut back all the spider mite damaged leaves. So this is what the plant actually looks like today. It looks a little weird, it looks a little funny looking. I agree, it looks really weird. But the one leaf that's still on there, that is a leaf that recently popped out of that plant. So I said, you know what? That's, that leaf is the reason why I decided not to throw the plant away because as soon as I put it outside, and you guys know, BOPs, they're, they're tropical plants, right? They're grown outdoors. So as soon as I put it outside, it immediately started shooting out new leaves. Once I saw that new leaf come and I said, okay, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, not throwing it away, I'm keeping the plant. So I decided to cut it back. I don't know if cutting it back was the best or smartest thing to do, but I'm hoping that by cutting it back in the way that I did, it will promote more growth and then eventually my plant would kind of come back to looking kind of decent. So we'll see what happens with that. If you're interested in me kind of documenting the journey of that plant, I'll be happy to do so. I did record a video of me cleaning out the leaves from when it did have the case of spider mite. So I'll be happy to put together something dedicated to that plant only. Okay, the last plant that I wanted to show today is my ZZ plant, my ZZ Raven. The ZZ plant is another plant that's easy to care for, which is no problem for me. I'm definitely a plant person. If the plant is easy to care for, I'm all over it. I also do like, you know, exotic plants, but certain plants that are in the exotic family, that are in the difficult to care for family, sometimes you just don't want the fuss. Unless you really have an amazing green thumb, then virtual high five. But I just know how I am. I, if a plant is too difficult for me to take care of, I'm not even gonna bother. I'll just admire it from afar watching your beautiful videos. ZZ Raven, this plant is so beautiful. 
So as you can see, this is why they call it a ZZ Raven because of the dark leaves. But you'll notice that I do have some lighter colored leaves on here, some lighter colored stems. That just simply means that these leaves are newer. So these are the new growth. When you do get new growth in the ZZ Raven, it does come out green like the traditional ZZ plant does. And then eventually over time, it does darken up. So let me see if I can show you. So if you can see with this plant, you see how the, the tips are darker? It's almost like someone took like a black magic marker and outlined the plant. So the plant is starting to turn to its natural dark shade. And I just love this plant so much. I, this was another one that was giving me issues with fungus gnats. So I did the same thing that I did with my tamiki. I switched out the soil to that um, orchid bark, perlite, and soil mixture. And then I also put it outside probably for about a week, week and a half. Fungus gnats are gone. I really think that the soil that I used previously, and I'm not even gonna put that brand out there and throw them under the bus, but this plant has been doing so well. It's been pushing out a lot of new leaves. And again, the ZZ Raven is one of my favorite plants in my indoor plant collection. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. And if not, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.